We are Sean, Emma, Rex, Maggie and our motorhome Rennie and together we are the Search 365. Welcome to episode 3 of our Northern England tour. Hi, I've come out today um, on my own. I've left uh, Sean and the dogs just came up through the village of Coniston to find the entrance to this walk I'm going to do. Um, I've come out on my own give it a little bit of a go so I'll take you on the way it's about a seven mile loop um, and I've never been here before so hopefully I won't get lost um, so we're gonna go up to um, some hopefully some see some waterfalls and some tarns um, and hopefully there'll be some epic views along the way so come along The Tarn House Walk is a circular walk which can be accessed from the National Trust car park and from there is a leisurely one and three quarter miles walk. Or for a longer more challenging hike it can be accessed from both Coniston and Hawkshead villages. Beautiful views. I think we're heading into a wooded area now probably going to be a steep climb up to the top it's very rooty and rocky and glad I wore my hiking boots today um, just in case I go over on my ankle yeah so put the camera away and keep on going so I've just made it through the woods and uh, we're still heading up the road just here now um, got some epic views check that out awesome views shame it's not a bit nicer weather but it's nice and cool for this walk so um, and it, you need it to be cool because it's quite hilly in places um, so yeah dodged some cows said hello to some sheep and I'm just gonna crack on walking up here and hopefully we'll get you some better views or nicer views not that you can get be much better than that um, as we go further up ladies facing my fears got past the ladies oh, epic view so I'm just having a bit of a rest oh, look at that so one of the things I was going to do was um, check out Tom Gill's waterfall which is supposed to be a nice waterfall but as you can see the riverbed is pretty dry I'm gonna trek my way down here though anyway just a little bit further just to see if there's anything at all and if not I'll make my way back up to the lakes at the top and take you on a tour around there So I've just been having a chat with a couple that have walked up and they've said that there is a little bit of a trickle further down and I can hear a bit more water just working my way down this lot. Um, so I'm going to head down and climb back up and have a rest. It's a bit tricky. Um, okay, but probably worth, worth it, hopefully. For a little bit of a waterfall anyway. There hasn't been much rain recently so... Uh, which is probably a good job because if it was all, this was all wet I think it would be like an ice rink so very rocky definitely don't want to fall over um, but we've been down worse so I'm going to crack on and I'll um, show you the waterfall when I find it you yes. can hear water anyway so that's a good sign
Yeah, thank you. You? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got some new friends. Hello, friends. How are you? Hmm? Where's your friend going? Can you sit down? Oh, there we go. All right. What you got? What you got? Me trying to eat my fruity biscuits. Got some avid watchers. I'm not sure if you can have them. I don't think you're allowed them. Please don't peck my feet. This old tree's falling down and look what people have done. It's full of pennies and two peas and five peas. Amazing. Tarn House was originally part of the monks Coniston estate. The owner's plan was to develop the existing three natural tarns and create one body of water with a bold ornamental planting scheme surrounding it. Now largely owned by the National Trust, Tarn House as it is today was the vision of the former owner. They continue to work to restore some of the designed landscape in his original plan. So I've just made my way round the tarn. Quite well managed walk. Lots of people walking their dogs. It's pretty epic views over the tarn. And I'll just flip round. I don't know if you can see this. Gorgeous weather. <laughs> um, it's a bit cloudy and rainy actually, but it's actually really nice because it's not too hot. Um, and it's made this walk a lot easier for me anyway. And it looks all mean and moody everywhere. It's quite nice. Um, there's plenty of people around, um, especially around this part. There's obviously a, there's a big National Trust car park at the top, so there's lots of people driving up in their smaller cars and able to get to this access to this quite easily I haven't walked all the way from Coniston like me um, so I'm gonna make my way back towards the car park and then find my way down back into the village of Coniston so I'll let you know if there's anything nice on the way down and uh, see how we get on okay so I found the path that leads me back down to Coniston a slightly different way from the way I came up so I've got about two and a half miles to get back into the village and then about another mile to get back to the campsite. Might treat myself to a shandy when I get back to Coniston, we'll soon see. Um, yeah, it's pretty, uh, should have gone to the toilet. Oops, so I'm just there. It's the National Trust car park. I should, probably should have gone. Never mind. Might have to have a wild wee. Um, yeah so yeah it was a pretty cool walk i've got to make it all the way back down let's hope i don't meet too many cows along the way um so yeah i'll see uh, if there's anything interesting to show you on the way back apart from this slug <laughs> this seems to be the theme Listen to the silence. It's a beautiful forest. Pretty steep in places. I haven't seen another soul. Absolutely gorgeous.
You can do it. Go on. Go on, you can do it. Come on, sheepy. Oh, you're going that way instead. Okay. Make sure you get there. There you go. Back to your bro. Well done. Nearly back at Coniston now. A few more. Oh, a quarter of a mile to go, I think. Back into the village. And then I've got another mile and a bit back to the campsite. But like I said, I might go and have a beer first. So. <laughs> Didn't stop for a beer in the end. I couldn't find a table and I was busting for the loo. So they've got some nice little toilets in uh, the middle of Coniston village. So I got myself an ice cream instead. And I also bought Sean some fudge. Shh. So I'm nice to him, aren't I? So I'm sure he'll enjoy that. All right, not long to go back to the campsite. See you back at base. On the way back to our campsite, I passed by Coniston Hall, a 400 year old grade two listed building now owned by the National Trust. Originally used as a hunting lodge, but now used as a barn, sailing club and reception for the Coniston Hall campsite. We opted not to stay at that campsite, but instead stayed at the Coniston Coppice Caravan and Motorhome Club site. This was because we wanted electric hookup, a motorhome service point, and the site is generally quieter and more sedate, where we were more likely to get a good night's sleep. Final approach. Oh, we've got neighbours. Oh, is anyone here? Someone having a nap? <laughs> Is someone having a nap? <laughs> Hello. Can't see you through the window. <laughs> Situated in the heart of the Lake District, Coniston Village lies at the northwest end of Coniston Water. With the Old Man of Coniston keeping a watchful eye, the village location is perfect for visitors who enjoy hiking, cycling, outdoor adventure sports and water sports. Some notable residents of the area include the writer, poet and art critic John Ruskin, of which there is a museum dedicated to him in the village. Also, the poet Lord Tennyson and the author of Swallows and Amazons, Arthur Ransom. shops supplying quaint gifts, local produce and crafts, outdoor clothing and camping accessories. Plus an array of restaurants, pubs and cafes to suit all tastes and budgets. It has something for everyone. Most places are dog friendly too, which is great to see. Next time in episode four, we go on the hunt for a waterfall and check out the area's copper mine past. <laughs>